Martin, our guest, he's a world-class uh, researcher, inventor, deep-sea diver. Did you ever spearfish or anything as a kid? Oh, absolutely. I was the Canadian National Spearfishing Champion in the uh, late 50s and early 60s. And uh, it was very interesting. Uh, I hope there's no lingcod in heaven because I'm in big trouble okay. if there is. You know? Okay, but it was fun. Yes, it, it was, was fun. It was fun. You learned to hold your breath. Yes, I did. All of that. Okay, back to this asteroid business. Mm -hmm. Who's involved? Is NASA's involved <coughs> or not? Yeah, NASA's, uh, NASA's very involved. much involved and the Canadian Space Agency. And just recently, I guess as, as recently as a week or 10 days ago, uh, our friend Jim Cameron we just talked about and uh, Eric Schmidt from Google and a bunch of uh, billionaires uh, have got together and formed a company, Planetary Resources, um, to go and mine asteroids. Uh, gold, silver, what's in an asteroid? Everything. It Everything, on the all asteroid, the minerals. Yes. So they're all, they're all there, but they're all concentrated. So uh, I had heard, and I'm, I'm certainly not a, uh, you know, a, a geologist, but right. uh, they say that uh, some of these um, asteroids could be pure platinum. I think that's a that kind could of an be a stretch, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, there are certainly people for years that have tried to mine sand in the desert, mm -hmm. uh, extract the gold out sure. of the sand in the desert, that kind of thing. So now the asteroid, and uh, you know, we all, I don't think we daily worry about an asteroid conking us or landing in our backyard. But but uh, the conspiracy theorists say it's just or. The scientists say just a matter of time before one comes down. Oh, I down. think so. I think that's true. Um, actually, we just finished a, a project with NASA in uh, November, and we're doing. Uh, we had astronauts flying our subs. We, we teach them to operate the subs. Right. And um, part of that was to uh, do underwater work on a fake asteroid that they'd set up um, off the coast of Florida. Mm -hmm. we actually, built an asteroid underwater so we could simulate going there with a lander and drilling into it, because you have to anchor your lander because the asteroids tumble. So I was talking to uh, some of the guys involved, and I said, so why, uh, why, what are you doing there? And they mm -hmm. said, well, a lot of different things. You know, the, sci the scientists are very hot to go there. He said, and we're, we're interested in whether or not we can actually build a structure. And I said, before? And he said, well, I mean, he said, don't quote me, but, uh, you know, it's possible we might want to put a jet engine on one of these things or a thruster one day. Really, man yeah. has gone too far so, now. So yeah, it's Armageddon. I mean, it's, you know, it's uh, <laughs> what the idea is that it only takes a very slight push to move to change the orbit. So if one of these I things see. was threatening Earth, you could change its orbit and send mm. it off on another. And I direction. imagine, like <coughs> uh, the astrophysicists, uh, can see things like that. Like as oh, they're yes, uh, they're they all can, monitoring and they, they know they see the decaying orbit, so they can calculate absolutely when this thing's going to be a threat and everything else. Mm -hmm. And I had no idea. I, I, uh, Buzz Aldrin is an avid diver. Right. And, um, so you've so, met him too, right? Oh, yeah, sure. You um, and the Buzz. We go, we go diving. But, um, you know, to watch him calculate these orbits, and we should, when we go to, the, to land on the, to Mars, we should do a slingshot orbit, and here's, and he's drawing this stuff. As I draw, you know, submarines, right. he draws these orbital things. And I'm sitting there mm. with my eyeballs hanging out mm. saying, how the hell do you do that? How do you know this? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, uh, Buzz Aldrin, where does he like to dive? Like, do I divers have, well, like there's others, a, well, there's a group have called, special place, special mountain, special yeah, exactly. there's undersea a, adventure? There's a group called the Sea Space Symposium, and we get together once a year and go someplace to go diving, and not just diving, but usually it's a place where the diving's good, uh, you know, the Marianas or the, uh, okay. you know, Tahiti or someplace, but also a place where we can hear what everybody's doing. So the space community and the, and the undersea community can get together and say, this is what we're doing. Uh, what are you guys doing? We give papers to each other and mm -hmm. talk. And it's, uh, It started mm -hmm. out as uh, a way to influence governments on what they should be doing and wound up as kind of a social club, but more than that, right. you know, uh, actually find out what's going on, the latest mm -hmm. things. You know. Well, that's a big question. Governments, what should they be doing? You may mm. know that the mayor is trying to stop uh, more oil tankers coming into mm -hmm. our harbor. Mm -hmm. I don't know that he has any clout to do that, but he's making a statement today. How do you feel about that, well, knowing I the was, sea like you do? Well, I was involved in uh, offshore oil drilling for, for many, many, many years. Uh, our crews from Kandai were the guys that uh, dove on the exploration phase of the Hibernia well off, mm -hmm. uh, off Newfoundland. And, we uh, had contracts for 12 years in the Canadian high Arctic for oil drilling. Um, I'm of mixed feelings, quite frankly. I mean, it seems hypocritical. You know, we, uh, we made a lot of money from the oil companies and we mm -hmm. did a lot of diving for them. 
Um, I was on the, I was a diver on the first oil rig on the west coast here, the Setco 135F uh, in the 60s. And, uh, and I love the coast. I love this place and yes. I hate to think what mm -hmm. could happen. Yes, and so, it could happen. We saw it happen in the Gulf. Oh, we sure did. And Were so, you there? Uh, no, I wasn't down in the Gulf, although, uh, again, back, jump back to Cameron. Cameron uh, set up a, uh, an ad hoc committee uh, and we all went to uh, the EPA headquarters, Environmental Protection Agency headquarters in Washington, D.C., and sat down with them and said, look, you know, what you're getting from BP is baloney. Mm -hmm. In fact, we said it a little more graphic than that. I but, remember. Uh, yes. And uh, we were actually successful in getting them to change some of the stuff they did. But uh, the, yeah, the, you know, what is, what is the coast worth? What is the, mm. you know, what is the sea life here worth? Right, what is and, all of that? and what is the uh, oil worth? Yeah, exactly. And how so, uh, badly how do, you, do we need it? And how do you isn't there it? a green energy that could you know <laughs> take who, over or something like, like Haida Gwaii, for instance, well, I've just, offshore you exploration? Took, you took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that as an example. Good job, uh, Gary Inshaw, the mm -hmm. head guy there. He doesn't like to be called by his English name. But, right. Um, he and I go back a long ways back. And uh, so he, he said, when he was asked directly, so will you allow oil drilling? Because the only place in BC that they've actually know where there's large quantities of oil is off Haida mm -hmm. And he said, oh, absolutely. He said, we want to have our fair share of it and all this sort of stuff. And as soon as they can convince me that it's safe to drill, that I'll be glad to. So I was talking to him and I said, that was quite a statement. He said, they'll never convince me that it's safe to drill. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Lujia. Ah. Certainly yeah. does. Well, it's our archipelago, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It's a, anybody so, who's spent time in Haida Gwaii, the Charlottes, no, yeah, it's great place. Yeah. Uh, magnificent. I'm, yeah. I'm sure you've dived there. Oh yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it is such you know on the surface and underwater. It's such a beautiful place. So what next? From well, the newt suit to the exosuit to the well, the next one's getting. I think I'm getting getting influence from the space stuff with NASA and whatnot. Because what I'd like to do now is build an undersea habitat, a colony almost. Um, now, this has been done many times before, Jacques Cousteau's Starfish House. Starfish house. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a habitat off the, that we were working out of, out, of Flor out of Florida. But the one I want to build is quite different. All of the other uh, habitats have been subject to outside pressure. That is, they're like an upside down teacup. You know, they're open at the bottom. Mm -hmm. So you're in there, in the dry, you can sleep and eat. And when you want to go diving, you just go, you know, sit on an edge and plunk into the water. But you're exposed to pressure. So you have to decompress if you want to come up, if you go to any depth at all. What I propose to do is to build a one atmosphere habitat. So it's going to be three, 4,000 feet down, but inside you'll be the same pressure right here, just like our suit, just like our submarine. Okay, and there'll be some light. Well, so we be can read at night. There will be lots of light because what you do is you build this thing around a black smoker, you know, the heat vents. Of course and you, you do. <laughs> and you use the, the differential temperature the heat mm. vent is 700 degrees F, 800 degrees F. Outside water temperature is 40 degrees F. Huge differential. So use that to generate electricity. So if we run out of land, mm -hmm. we which can we go, will. Which, which we, we will. will. Oh, We're yeah. pretty good at that. Oh, the way we mm, the way we go the and explore exactly. and all of that. You have to come back and we'll talk about uh, undersea pollution okay. and the sadder side I'll of what you do. It. Okay, ben, nice to see you always again. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Uh, Phil Newton, inventor extraordinaire, head of Newtco Research.